All right. Let's start out with stretching your legs out. And thank you for being here. Point and flex and point and flex. Point, flex. Good. And then we'll go wide. And we've got <laughs> Joyce Israel. We have uh, lentil soup. <laughs> like, alrighty. So um, it's kind of like, you know, there's, um, what is it, uh, right next, right close to, close to Seattle Athletic Club, there's Turkish Delight, and they have great lentil soup. And some of you go there after class. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, it's kind of the incentive, you know, it's like, oh, if I get to this class, I get to have my lentil soup. So here we are making it, an odd way of making it, but there you go. You have, you're holding a wooden spoon, a big giant wooden spoon, and you're stirring the pot. Okay. And then we're going to go the other way. But what I'm going to do is turn a little bit so you can see that I'm trying to keep my back um, from folding too much. Like I don't want to round. I'm keeping my back straight. Yeah. And the idea came from India. When you go to the, like on tour, we always go to a Sikh temple. All the Sikh temples have these massive um, kitchens and volunteers, hundreds of volunteers. I don't know how many hundreds of volunteers stir enormous pots of dal, of lentil soup, of you know, all kinds of, they're making enormous quantities of food to feed the needy every day. Every day, all the Sikh temples do this. Okay, that can be tiring on the arms. <laughs> Alrighty, and then from here, let's go ahead and bend one knee, extend one leg, and flex the ankle, and you come to a side bend. So you're reaching up, and over. So remember, these are movements. So if you, you know, you could use a strap, but we're going to come in, out, in, out. Um, so maybe your hand is on your knee, shin bone, ankle. And then you come up and you twist towards your bent knee and look back. Some will stay with the twist. And if your hand's okay with it, you press into your back hip, you or you press down into the mat and you lift. So what's nice is you can do more of a side bend movement. Maybe that works better for you. You can also adjust your knee so it's, it gives you more support. And some of you can look up at the ceiling if you add more of an arch. Look up and breathe. Lower and it's a repeat. Come over again. Breath in and if you, if you feel like your shoulders tight, bring your hand behind your head. Elbow pointing up, yeah, or arm extended. Breathing in, exhale. Okay. Come on up and it's a twist, turning towards your bent knee. Look past your shoulder, breathe in, exhale. Hand beside, you could stand a twist or hand beside pelvis and you reach, adjust your knee if you like, and then could be side bend or more of an arch, look up and breathe. Exhale. And release and we have second side. So not held poses, so reverse. And as you reverse, remember the straight leg actively flex, reach up, inhale and come over. We'll see what is possible. You can take hand to the back of your head if you like. Instead of your elbow falling forward, you want your elbow to point up. Breathe in. Exhale. Come up and there's a twist turning towards your bent knee. Lengthen the spine. Look past your shoulder. Stay here or prop yourself up. You could adjust your knee. More of a side bend movement or more of a back bend movement when you look up. Breath in. Exhale. Repeat. Come down. And reach up. Deep breath in. Come over. Lengthen. And breathe. 
side stretch. Come up and twist, turning, good. Looking past your shoulder, legs pushing out through the heel. And then hand the side hip, and you could adjust, go long or reach up, send your heart up, breathing in. Exhale. Nice. And release. Good work. Okay. So we're extending both legs again. And we're going to go side, sides. So come over, extend, inhale, center. Exhale over, inhale center, exhale over, inhale up, exhale over, last one, good, and coming on up, good work. And then taking the soles of the feet together. So as you have soles of the feet together. Um, I always kind of lift, get both sitting bones down. And again, I don't want to round my back. I want to be upright. Look up. And then I will round as I lower, bringing head to or towards your feet. Inhale, hold your ankles, look up. Arch, send your heart up. Exhale, lower, breathe. Inhale, look up. Exhale, lower. Last one, look up. Exhale, lower. Good. And bring your legs together. I know, I know you're thinking, oh no, boat is coming, but we're gonna do something a little differently, okay? So you can see my feet are not like real close in, they're out a little bit. Um, you could go out even more where your heels are down and your toes are not. I'd like to have the foot touching, but when I go back, sometimes my, my, my toes come up. That's okay. So reach your arms up, extend your back, round your back, tuck your belly in, come down. Now, if this bothers your tailbone, you would want a blanket underneath you. Come up, lengthen, reach, extend, look straight ahead. Exhale, tuck belly in, create like you're got a, you're contoured to a beach ball, <laughs> drop back and then lift and reach up. I'll tell you something sometimes helps it is to bring a block to the knees. If you have a block, um, I can show it. You don't have to do this, but having a block gives you a little more grip through your legs. Exhale, come back and inhale, reach up. Yeah, we're going to add a little more. Come back. Come up, bring your hands down, draw the heels closer in with the block or no block, press up into tabletop, lift, tilt your head back, lower, and we'll do one more like that. Legs have to go out more. Exhale, pull back like you have a bungee cord and you're pulling it and then it snaps back into position and you lengthen and draw your feet closer in and press and see if you can squeeze into the block, press up, tilt your head back, back, breathe in. Exhale, lower and take the block away. Okay, so a few on our backs and um, let me see, I'll move a little closer in so you can really see me and I don't run into space <laughs> problems. So let's pull both these into chest. And then it's a, it's a nice way. Remember, these are all moving poses. So what we're going to do is keep hugging right knee to chest. Lift your head, head to knee. And maybe even extending your legs. So maybe you're like, oh, I can't, I can hold behind the knee. Maybe you can hold calf muscle, ankle, or maybe you're holding your foot. Lower and do second side. So hugging left knee to chest. Exhale, lift. 
Maybe you hold your foot, who knows, right? And maybe you can extend holding behind the knee or calf muscle or ankle or foot. And lower your head, lower the leg. Let your head go side, side, just completely relaxing your neck. Okay. So yes, another core work here. <laughs> we need a block for it. <clears throat> Again, if you don't have a block, you're fine. You'll, you'll be quite fine with that. The block just gives me an extra push into. And if you have no block, your feet are together. Okay. So think of this. What I call it is chasing the block. Okay. So arms are up in the air. Take a breath in, exhale, lift, lower the legs on that one exhalation. Your arms chase the legs. Legs come to about an inch above the floor. Pull in, inhale. Exhale, lift and lower. Lift your head and lower your legs. Inhale, draw in. Exhale, lift. If this is hard for you, lift, support holding your head. Okay, down and release. And just take the block to the side, soles of the feet together and hands onto the belly. So you breathe in, exhale. Again, breath in, exhale. We're going to interlace fingers, press palms up overhead, stretch into your torso. One more breath here, inhale, exhale. Now we're taking hold of the right leg. The left leg is down on the mat and we'll see how this goes. So your knee is bent and you're making circles. So I'm trying not to like rock. I wanna to try to keep my pelvis down. There's some movement of course, but this is more, you know, right now it's easy. And then you, you intensify a little bit by going out to the side, straighten your leg, hover above the floor. It's not touching down, it's hovering and draw in. So that's the movement. Circle, draw the knee in, out to the side, and straighten. Knee in, knee bent, out to the side, straighten, and back to center. One more like that. In, out to the side, and straighten. Now let's do the other side. Start out, just make little, little circles. It's a really good one for the hip joints. It's like you're warming up, lubricating the hip joint. And then uh, start to straighten and bend. Out to the side, straighten and bend, straighten and bend, and straighten, good, and bend, good work. And so now there's a bridge pose, so those, those movements are really good as well. Uh, I always find the beginning movements are, oh, they're like, they're like the flowers. They're simple and profound, right? They're simple and beautiful. They are. So you start out pelvic tilts. There is an arch. There is no arch. Inhale, arch, exhale, press down. Bring your hands to your neck. Make sure your neck is not tensed up. Inhale, arch, exhale, press down and tighten your pelvic floor muscles. Inhale, release. Exhale, press down and tighten pelvic floor muscles. Those are muscles that become very weak. The first ones become weak. So we, we can always strengthen the little kegels or pelvic floor muscular muscular contraction is important and then release and then from here hands are down you're going to lift up coming into bridge lift and i would suggest you're going to be fine without watching you've done these many times look up at <laughs> the ceiling lower your pelvis and bring your arms up overhead so with the breathing inhale pelvis comes up Hands are back in their original position. They can press. Exhale, lower, because you're doing a pelvic tilt and you're tucking the belly in. Inhale, up. Exhale, pelvis down. Even though the arms are moving up, down, my breathing is matching the pelvic movement. Inhale, pelvis up, this is the last one. Exhale, down. Good work. So we'll work on, um, let's see, what one shall we do first? Yep, we're gonna do the Japanese fan. It's the Japanese paper fan. 
and I love this. I like to imagine a beautiful paper fan, handmade paper, all folded, pleated, and you need something under your head. Sometimes a blanket is very nice. Um, and then oftentimes there's, ooh, it works really well, the flower thing. Uh, there's usually a painting on your paint it on your flaw oh sorry paper fan and the painting is often seasonal and not always but often it is a flower motif so <laughs> seasonal flower motif now if you have all these extras i know everyone has a blanket something under your head but maybe the top knee will rest on a block again does it have to no you're fine with that one so your hands are at shoulder height and you're the fan all folded up and nobody knows what's inside of you and then you open and you reveal your gorgeous exquisite art and let's just say it's a flower what is it and then you're extending opening and coming forward palms together back and forth inhale extend open exhale together so what I would like you to do is back and forth, watch your hand travel across the room, stretching through the pectorals, opening across the heart center, exhale as the hands come together, inhale as your arms open out. You're trying to deepen your twist, deepening the openings of the upper body. You're the fan that opens and closes. What is your artwork on the fan? Hand painted, what are the colors? Keep your fan open, why not? Take another breath here, inhale, exhale, to get your shoulder down yep and let's take it the other direction okay i didn't really i don't think i specified right or left it shouldn't matter you'll do both sides so i have something under your head i learned this nothing under my head and nothing under the other knee but i kind of like that because my neck can really really relax okay and then my knee then I have something to think about. Oh, my knee comes up. So the knee should be about as high as the hip. And begin. Side two. Watch your hand as it travels across the room. Open up. And this emphasizes upper thoracic opening. It helps correct posture. Inhale up. Open. Shift. Try to get your shoulder down. Exhale back. So you might find, I find, the inhalation isn't enough to complete the movement. So don't be holding your breath, but add a few extra rounds of breath there if you need, and then back. Do two more at your own pace. Okay, and then we are done. Let's go ahead and hold it open also. Hold open and try to get shoulder down, breath in. Exhale. And again, breath in. Exhale. Hopefully you're okay luxuriating on your back here because you have two more. Okay, so um, this next one goes like this. Now you're on your back. Now, do you need something under your head? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think you do, but you might be really comfortable. <laughs> so that's okay. But I took mine away. So one leg is up, one leg down. You might have your knee bent. Maybe you can straighten, okay, and flex. The ankle, arms at a T position. Come across. Doesn't matter right or left. You're going to come across. The Imagine that your foot can, like, touch your hand. <laughs> uh, if you're aiming in that direction, rather than down, maybe that's what it is. We're not using straps, okay? And you come back to center. We're gonna do that three more times. Exhale, turn your head opposite of the leg, and inhale, center. 
Exhale. Inhale, center. Last one. Exhale. Inhale, center. Good work. And then pull me into the chest, lift your head. And once again, maybe you can reach your foot and breathe. And lower. Okay, so second side, um, we will have the other leg up. So instead of knee bent, you know, maybe you can straighten, straighten, straighten. Arms are at a T. Exhale, come across. And again, I'm trying to really take my hand, you know, my foot up, up, up towards the hand and back to center. Even if you can't go there, of course, not everyone go there. Uh, exhale, but at least you're making the effort to bring the leg up higher. Back to center. Three more. Exhale. Back to center. Exhale. Back to center. And last one. And back to center. Good work. Pull me into chest, lift your head, and maybe just taking hold of your foot and breathe. Nice. Uh, so let's do this one where you're pressing up, your pelvis is up, it's bridge. You're ready to clasp your hands, tuck shoulders underneath you, that'll get you a little higher, and then take one leg up if you can, right? Take one leg up, pointing through the toes, breath in. Exhale, lower, and do the other side. Knee up, toes pointed, standing leg strong. Leg down, heels up, and lower. Try to really get your back to press down, to press down, press down. Good work, and let's go ahead and take hold of the feet. Happy baby, happy baby, and breathe. Breath in. Exhale, this is a good rainy day pose. <laughs> this, this one and the following, okay. So here's how we do it. We're gonna grab, oh, and you may want a strap. You may or may not, I'll tell you what. Most can reach like this, holding the foot in half lotus, but not everyone can kick the leg out while holding the foot, especially if you're long-legged or a little tighter in the hamstring or both. So you could start out with the strap and then kick the leg out to the side, all right? Fold in, lift your head, head towards foot, lower your head, kick the leg out to the side. Two more, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, Let's do the other side. So um, I don't usually use a strap, but that wasn't bad. I, I didn't mind using the strap on this. So uh, I have the strap on you know, at the leg. So again, my knee is not pointing in towards me. It's pointing towards the, ceiling, uh, towards the screen. And then I'm going to lift, reach up, kick the leg out to the side. With the breathing, exhale, lift. Inhale, kick the leg out to the side. Exhale. Kick the leg out to the side. Good. Is there one more in there? Exhale. And extend. Kick the leg out to the side. Good work. And then finally release. Good. <laughs> did it. We did it. And we're coming up and we're going to come to child's pose. So adjusting. Uh, you might need the blanket for your knees and lowering your head in child's pose. So continuing with the movements. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a few more before we actually hold some poses. So as you're here, hands are forward. And what we're going to do is cat cow. You'll round, arch, round, inhale, arch. Just like the flowers again, simple and beautiful. Round, inhale, arch, 
And then from here, we're coming back to downward facing dog, okay? So we have swimming dog. Now I've never seen dogs swim like this, but hey, and I'm going to modify it first and then we can see we can get, you know, get another way to do these. So what we're going to have to do is come to plank, measure it out in plank. From plank, shift back downward facing dog, but keep your hands and feet where they are. Come forward to plank, bring one knee down. I'm not gonna say left or right, turn to your side, but one hand comes up off the mat by your pelvis, over to the side, all the way up, oh, up overhead and down. That's the dog swimming. I told you it doesn't look like a dog swimming. Press back, all the way back. That's the modified one, okay? Knee down, the other side, other knee down. Turn the hand, one hand back, 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 reaching up into the air, up over ear, and hand is down, okay? So I think I'll go ahead and uh, do left, right. Sometimes I don't because it's like, I don't, but, but I think it will be helpful, okay? So plank position, even if you did one side, or, you know, this side, we're gonna go, go again. Downward facing dog, come forward, bring your left knee down if you want, or keep it straightened. Your feet are scissored. Your right hand comes back past the hip, all the way up in the air, up over ear, and you're back to plank and downward facing dog. Come forward, plank, right knee down, or keep your legs scissored, left arm back by the pelvis, up overhead, and plank and downward facing dog. Oh, we're gonna add more, okay? Come forward, so it's up to you. Can you stack your feet? Your arm reaches back. Oh, maybe you're gonna go fancy on me and bring your foot into like tree and down. I'm telling you, I've never seen dogs do this. Press, and you rarely see humans do this, <laughs> okay? And then feet stack perhaps, or maybe you're in a tree, left arm back by the pelvis up overhead, down and downward facing dog. And then from here, walk back to your feet. Yeah, all the weight is off your hands. You're probably so happy. Hands to elbows and swing side side to swing have your feet wide as the mat and swing breathing in exhale now let's go ahead and come on up and i'll adjust so i'm not so i'm all in there okay mm -hmm. okay and here we are so we'll do this one i don't think you'll need that you'll need it a little later for for um on Jenny, for crescent moon, I have the Sanskrit name in mind. So here you are, your heels are turned in, toes turned out. Yeah, it's been quite a week since I saw you last, yeah, with so much happening. Well, it looks, we're all hanging in there. And bend the knees. And so, so it's that shimmy, but we're gonna do two different ways, okay? So you might wanna go wider, okay? Think shoulder to opposite knee. So shimmy over inhale up use your hands to push shimmy over again think opposite shoulder opposite knee inhale up exhale over you don't have to come all the way up exhale over up. I'll show it on the side exhale so some are keeping the knees bent the whole time and some are shifting over so see how that works for you I like keeping the knees bent the whole time exhale down up now come on up so we have another way to work it bring your legs in together for a moment how about your feet are together heels raise heels down mm -hmm. heels are up heels are down arms arms come up arms down so engage your core engage your legs have your legs close together inhale up exhale down really helps to do that we've done all this pelvic the pelvic tucks inhale up exhale down now arms out to the sides inhale up exhale down you know it's coming up palms face up to a t position keep the heels up can you twist tiptoe pose turn look in one direction Woo! and turn the other direction it's pretty cool <laughs> it might be 
you know, terribly awkward. Who knows? It's not easy. And come back. But it's kind of simple, okay? So we go wide again. And this time, so before I was going, I was going, now I'm going to twist, but I'm going to stay center. So imagine that I'm bringing, I want to bring my ear towards the ground. So I'm going to shift center. I hope you can see the difference. Exhale down, like you're, you're trying to listen to something from the ground. I don't know why, but there you go. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Good. And lengthen and walk the feet closer together. Good work. So oh, those are those are really nice movements. So let's um let's start out with the crescent moon and I need a blanket on it. And there's a lot of different parts to it. So we're still in the moving mode, like back and forth. And I promise you we'll be having some that are held. This is the last uh, moving one. So it depends on you. Maybe this is as deep as you go. Uh, maybe you can go further forward, okay? Bring your hands down. Use blocks if you need to lower your head so it's all whoo, hip flexor, right? Now everybody's different. You're gonna come back and you know, we do this in class a lot. Maybe this is it. Maybe you're like, oh, that's it. And it's a hamstring stretch, calf stretch, especially if you can reach. But some can also come to sitting. When I sit, my heel comes center line of the body and I reach forward. Not everyone can do that. That's okay. Don't, you know, it's gotta feel okay on your knee. Use your hands to help you press up. You only have two knees. And I like to remind you of that. And then when I come forward, my knee can go beyond the line of the ankle because my hands are helping me. So come back. Maybe you're going to be cautious with your knee and just say, yeah, this is enough for me. And some will say, no, I can come back and lower. Channel Julie Newcomb. She's, she's so good at this. Bring their head all the way down. Yeah. Press up and lengthen. Last one back. Use your hands, lengthen. So now I'm going to be, I'm going to come more upright. So I want to make sure that my knee and ankle are in alignment this time. I really don't want to go beyond because I, I have to steady my knee. I need support, right? Everybody needs support. So reach up, lengthen, bring your palms together, bend your elbows. So the elbows are not splaying out, but they're forward. They're hugging your ears, really. And you're going to reach back. Your thumbs will touch your, the, maybe the base of your neck, maybe further. And then palms unfold, and you have your hands on your shoulders. Look up, and what you want to do is your head is going to push your arms back. And breathe. So it's really, it shouldn't be low back movement at all. It's more like upper spine. Breathe in. Exhale. Release. Now you decide. Okay, I'm I'm gonna bend into my back knee. So you decide is that is that okay for you? Does that work for you? Do you feel like no I gotta be here? Can you reach? If you reach, I'm thinking opposite hand, opposite foot, left hand, right foot and breathe. Inhale. Exhale. There you go. Quad stretch. Maybe you can draw heel in towards buttocks and maybe not. Release. And either you can come back to downward facing dog and come back to child's pose. Okay, I'm going to go to child's pose. Breathing in. Exhale. Come to kneeling. Clasp hands behind the back. Ooh, arch arch look up and let's do second side so you have the other knee forward so back and forth move forward and back so you might say oh i'm the other side i'm just gonna go here a lot of it will depend on your knee if your knee doesn't like this compression you're not going to do it and then uh and i i just want to be really careful and then lower and breathe 
I want you to be careful. Come forward. And now when I come forward, because I shifted my leg, now my knee goes beyond the line of the ankle. Look ahead of you. Hip flexor. Come back. Ooh, hamstrings. Lower and breathe. Use your hands to press you up. Look, lengthen. Oh, now you can lengthen your spine. Breathe in. Exhale. Let's do one more back, one more back. So again, maybe you're modifying, or perhaps you can come down. You sit on your heel and lower your head. Push, press up. And now I'm going to adjust. However far I come forward, I want knee and ankle in alignment and reach the arms up. So there you go. Extend, reach, reach your heart center up, bend the elbows and breathe. Maybe your hands reach the back of your shoulders and squeeze your shoulders. Okay, lower. And let's see, can you bend into your back knee? Does that work at all? If it, if it gives you Charlie horses, don't go there. And then it's opposite hand, opposite foot, opposite hand, opposite foot. So if you can't reach, don't worry about it. You, maybe you're just getting a really nice hip flexor stretch. Maybe you can reach, maybe you can draw heel in. Okay, and deep. Nice breath in. Exhale. Ooh, nice. Okay, so we will come back. I'm gonna suggest child's pose. Just bring your hands back by your heels. Come up to kneeling again. Now you've got your camel. So again, you know, you might say, oh, hands on my low back, that's plenty. Uh, maybe you reach your uh, half camel. So just see what works for your back. Breath in, exhale. Release, and once again, reach for your heels, child's pose. We're coming up to standing. Now we have the held pose. We have the held pose. You're like, what? Those weren't held? <laughs> no, they were moving. Uh, so, so we want to start out, um, let's go ahead and start out with balance, okay? And we'll, we'll do tree, just because it's so grounding. It's so grounding. and. Um, uh, you know, if you've got, you have a park, you have trees, you have something greener, you can stand in front of a window, okay? So you're going to bring one foot up and take your hands to your heart, arms up. You can keep hands above head and bring your palms together up overhead and some like to extend the arms like branches of a tree. Hands are to heart, so you can see they're very quiet when you start holding poses after lots of the in, out, in, out movement. You experience, hopefully, you experience that the monkey mind has, their monkeys are taking a nap in the trees, how's that? <laughs> and, you know, not everybody has that, but many of us, it's just easy to be distracted with so many things, right? So many tasks, but yoga brings us to the moment. Hands are to heart and release. So we have warrior one. And just so you know, warrior one goes to a different pose. Um, I think you're being fine without, without any extra props, but here's what I will say. You'll have warrior one, and then um, there's the one where, like I would say for me, I'm gonna keep my heel down initially, then my heel come up. First I'm squared, then my, my pelvis was squared, and then my pelvis faces the corner. 
of the map. It doesn't open all the way, but partially. Um, I just want to show you this because when you're down, it's hard to do it and look. Some of you might find that a block comes in handy and maybe you're like, oh, forget it. I need six blocks. I don't have them. I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to show it with the block. I won't do it with the block, but now you've seen it. If you like having a block, you can have your block there. Okay. Then there's a twist. Three poses. So one foot is back, pelvis is squared. Your back heel could be down or up. Reach the arms up and extend and breathe. Heel comes down, hands come behind the back. Interlace fingers, roll shoulders back, look up. Begin to take your shoulder to the inside knee. So I'm like, I'm bringing that shoulder to the inside knee and lower your head. Maybe you can take your arms up away from your back. Your gaze is towards your back foot. Your hip, your, your hips have to be strong and limber. Bring your hands down. Now you're going to twist towards your bent knee. So you're, you'll square your hips again, lengthen your spine, turn towards your bent knee. You decide, hand on hip, back knee down, that's a modification. Back knee up is more intense, top arm up and breathe. Release, step forward. And when you step forward, just pause for a moment and mountain. Hands are to heart. Exhale. Once again, breath in. Exhale. So three poses, second side. Let's see, do I want? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll keep the same direction. So other leg steps back. And you will decide, you know, does your heel come down or heel up? And, and you're trying to get a 90 degree bend. I may have to go really wide for the 90 degree bend. And arms come up. So already, I know how much energy goes in this pose. I know how long I'm going to hold this pose. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work accordingly. So focus and breathe. Let's bring the hands down, bring your heel down and open your hip out slightly. Clasp your hands, roll the shoulders back, look up, start to come forward. So your shoulder uh, is coming to the inside knee, lower your head and take a moment to take your arms a little higher. Your stand, your bent knees, hip is strong, breathing in. Exhale. Focus on your back toe, if you can, your back foot. Let's bring one hand down. You're gonna twist towards your bent knee. You might drop down even more. And good, hand could be on back or arm is up in the air. And breathe, you can look. I can look to the screen or I can look up at my hand. Release, step forward. And once you step forward, bring your legs closer and together, stretch your length. Soften the knees, come on up. Reach, roll the shoulders back, reach the arms up into the air, palms touch, reach back, and hands to heart center. Good work. Exhale. Good work. So we are coming to sitting. 
And what I'm going to suggest as we come to sitting, uh, just take a moment to be in what we call Sukh Asana. Sukh means easy. So you might say, oh, this is great, Sukh Asana. Maybe you go into Ardha Padmasana. John, I've seen you do it. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, what, what is possible for you? And breathe. Exhale. Breath in. Exhale. I might have a, um, a chat. Okay, sorry. I have a chat. Someone had to leave early, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I missed the second side of tree. Huh. Huh. Did I? Meredith, you know, maybe I did. It wouldn't be past me, but I think we did it. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Let me see. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. I did both sides. So maybe you were so relaxed in tree that you forgot to switch that. I don't know. All right. So we're going to reverse the leg crossing. If you were sitting one way, reverse. Thank you guys. And breathe. Sometimes it does happen to me in yoga. When I'm doing my practice and I've done the practice and and I have videos now to prove it right so I'll go I think I forgot to do such and such and another side and I'll look and I mean I actually have been my focus has been pretty good but I'll look and it's there so um yeah things happen breath in exhale relax the shoulders We are coming um, onto our bellies for a moment and then we'll flip onto our backs. And as we come onto our bellies, uh, I just want you to take a moment, your forehead down onto your hands. Breathe. So this is a good one for anxiety because you're, you're, you're breathing into your diaphragmatic area. Like you want to inhale, exhale, just can feel how this works for you. Go right onto the bellies. Let's take the knees wide, as wide as your mat, and bend your knees, and then go side side. Hopefully, you have space as you go side side for the windshield wiper. So you know um, some of the classes, like the morning classes I'm doing, I have people tuning in from New York City, and they live in like little shoebox apartments. And they say, oh, we hate when you do, you know, windshield wiper on the back or the front, or we can't stand when you do swimming dog. We don't have space. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, keep going a little more. And then another, I kid you not, I kid you not, this is so funny. Um, my, my friend who lives in Seattle, her friend in New York said, oh, you have to take this class with my yoga teacher. So so Beth took class with her yoga teacher, Zoom, yoga teacher in New York, and then later the, her friend in New York took my class, okay? So Beth said the yoga teacher in New York, I kid you not, she did the class in her bathroom. She's doing the class in her bathroom because she has children, she has a family, and it's the only place she can go that's her own. <laughs> I know you love that. Okay, release. Let's come to sink. Thank goodness I don't have to do it in my bathroom, though it's big enough. <laughs> Elbows down, palms down, and stretch. Inhale. Exhale. Breath in. Are you still laughing about the bathroom? I think it's so funny. I would love, I just want to tune into her class just to see her do yoga in her bathroom. <laughs> 
and then some of you can extend. So maybe your elbows come up a little bit, maybe a lot. If that feels bad on your back, move your hands forward more and extend. Breath in, exhale, and lower. Okay, grab hold of one leg, just grab the heel, draw heel towards buttock. Now everyone's different. Some will say, oh, I gotta go on my side. That's easiest. On your belly, that's gonna be a better stretch, maybe deeper. Some can do both, okay? If you're doing both, hold. If you're doing one at a time, go ahead and switch. Not holding too long. If you're doing both, maybe you can kick your legs back and maybe come into like, like what I'm doing right now, I'm doing a bow. I'm only using my strength. I'm lifting using my strength. When I kick my legs, then I'm using a combination. Uh, when I kick my legs, I use a combination of strength and I lift my upper body and there's flexibility. So breathe in, exhale, and release, lower, forehead down. And let's stretch into child's pose, come back. Stretch your spine. And come onto your backs for the best part. <laughs> so once you're on your backs, um, this is the funny thing. I, I have, I also have some classes. This happens sometimes in some of the studios. Um, I have some classes where, um, it always happens in the kind of all levels of the more advanced classes. Um, and by the way, I'd say this is all levels right now, you know, um, but it always happens in this level of class. It doesn't happen in the gentle classes. I'll say, let's come to Shavasana and the longer class, the hour and 15 minutes, they have a longer Shavasana. And there's always one or two people, they, they don't want to do Shavasana. So they're like, they're still doing their poses, you know. <laughs> And um, to me, this is like, in, if you can come to your pose right now and find your center and enjoy stillness, to me, that's indicative of the deepening, the ever deepening practice that you are cultivating. Um, this is so important. All roads lead to Shavasana. I wanna have a t-shirt made like that. All roads lead to Shavasana, to peace, to stillness. I dedicated today's class to flowers because things have felt very heavy. So I actually, you know, I have flowers at home often. I have vases filled with flowers. It, it makes me happy. Um, the flowers, uh, even in the winter, you know, flowers that are representative of each season. In your mind's eye, I would like you to imagine yourself walking in a field of wildflowers, just amazing wildflowers. You're just walking, it's a meadow, maybe it's an alpine meadow. This time of year, the flowers are gorgeous. Indian paintbrush at its best. Some wild orchids. There's a lupin. And because it's a meadow, there's lots of little bugs, little, little bees buzzing around. They're not bothering you. They're too busy with the flowers. They are occupied. Maybe you still see some heather in bloom, some wild heather in bloom. And then I would like you for a moment to see, just as you lie here, you're not in the meadow anymore. I just want you to see an array of flowers nearby, an array of flowers that flip through your sensory mind. And we use the colors of the chakras for the red. I would like you to see a red poppy because I don't think there's anything like the color of a red poppy bursting with its papery, 
petals. I want you to see an orange gladiola because there's nothing like that orange is the gladiola. I think it's gladiolas, <laughs> one gladiolas. I want you to feel, to see a yellow rose. They are exquisite. We, we tend to be drawn towards red roses, but the yellow roses are also exquisite. There is, it's a, it's a is it the word, inimitable color. It's hard to put that color on canvas. Beautiful yellow rose, see the petal, see the texture. Petal looks almost succulent. I would like you to see green, green blades of grass, ble green leaves, the green leaf of a rose, the green leaves of so many flowers, feathery leaves, granulated leaves, cordon shaped leaves, textured leaves, smooth leaves leaves that seem to have little cilia on them green 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 i want you to see blue a blue delphinium beautiful blue delphinium see purple purple iris the bearded iris see the bearded part of the iris And lastly, I would like you to see white, the white of the calla lily. The white of the calla lily. So gorgeous. Creamy, white, 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 pure white. Begin to Deepen your breathing. I'll put you there. I'll put these here. And as you're ready, you'll start to make your way to sitting. I didn't, I was trying to arrange them so you could see them. My little vases. I've got calla lilies too. <laughs> Should bring them closer in, but then you won't see them. Okay. Uh, and I will I will add the gallery. You have to add, you know, with this new update that we had to do, everyone had to do an update. I can't put your chat back on. So you have to un unmute yourself if you'd like me to hear you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, wow. I am um, Mary Jo. I was thinking about I know you love your everybody loves flowers, but um, <laughs> Mary Jo, I was kind of thinking about Mary Jo always has flowers set up and yeah, beautiful vases of flowers. Anyways, that you know, just um, flowers make me make us happy. It's, these have been hard times, hard times for um, hard divisive times for our country. And so flowers are like, ah, oh, moment of meditation. Let's end with an ohm.